New, 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 yeah. new, 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 right. new, 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 new. First up. First up. We have more audio terminal block uh, items. So this is a uh, 6.35 millimeter uh, quarter inch stereo audio with terminal block connector. So this is really handy if you have to make connections to like guitar amps or modulars or anything that uses one of these larger audio connectors. I can, I can show it on the over. Actually, you know what, at the end, maybe I'll show them all at once. Okay, sure. um, but you basically you can, use a, you can use a screwdriver basically to open and close the connections. Yeah. This right is an ethernet, this is similar. It's a push terminal ethernet jack. This one doesn't have screws. I'm not sure why this one didn't come with screws, but instead it comes with push terminals. You push the terminal and then you poke the wire in. So you can basically make your own ethernet cable type things. I wouldn't actually use it for ethernet data. Um, you can get cables that do that very well, but if you have a custom wiring that uses an RJ45 jack, that's yeah. useful. This is the plug version, so you can make your own custom wiring right. plug. Got a little bit of this, have a little of that. Yeah, you got one of each. This. You can even do both. You could you plug, can plug one, in each other. one into the other. That's not Break out. very effective. Okay, and then we've got the, um, this is a TRRS audio plug connector. So this is a tip ring ring sleeve. It's a four pole connector. We've had ones that are three pole connectors, but oftentimes, like these are a little rare, but you really need them when you need them. You get um, an extra connection for microphone or video, like the Raspberry Pi 2 and the B Plus has that, a four pole connector on the AV jack. And there's uh, left, right, and video. Um, and then the, um, we also have the matching jack yeah. as well. Um, so you've got left, right, and then, you know, it's not marked, but it can be microphone or audio. Very, if you don't, it's if you have to make your own custom wiring connections, these are great. So let me just show them okay. on the overhead. So can you zoom in a little bit? Because it's just kind of small yeah, stuff. So, um, yeah, this is the uh, TRS, and, you know, this, this mates with this, basically. So you, you can plug them into each other. You can make custom cables. So if you want to, for example, you know, make something that plugs into a smartphone and you know, take advantage of like the microphone to transfer data, um, you know, this is one of the things you would use because you could, it's mechanically stable and then you could, you just um, open up the terminal blocks with a small screwdriver and then tighten them up. Um, this is, yeah, that quarter inch jack. And this one has a removable, um, I don't know what these are called, removable terminal blocks. So you can, you can wire this up and then, and then swap out. That's handy. The tips. Yeah, I don't know why this one gets to come with it. I, I like it. Um, likewise, this is the Ethernet to, and then you have all eight connections. Um, so it's it's a straight through connection system. And then this one is the jack. And this one, it's actually I think that this we had to buy from a different supplier, and that's why we didn't have one that has both terminal blocks. All they had was push blocks. But you push this in, and you use a screwdriver in it. Um, then you can put the wire in. So it's it's a it's a different way of doing it, but it's also effective. Okay. Next up, um, headers. These are slimline headers. They're shorter than usual. They're three millimeters, three and a half millimeters shorter than most female headers. And I'll, I'll demo them later, but basically they're perfect for feathers because they get um, the feather wings even closer. Okay. All right. And then um, we've got the very coveted Leather, leather man, or as I like to call it, leather person. And uh, these are the. This is the tread yeah. from Leather Man, and this is they announced this like over a year ago. Yeah, this I is have a, one. I just happened to not wear it today. Yeah, it's funny. So it's a wrist tool. It's really awesome. It's a multi. They make multi tools. They make some of the best multi tools in the world. Yeah. And this is a kind of a wearable multi tool. It's this really really awesome looking bracelet. This is great photos too. Like we didn't have to take our own photos because their photos are yeah, so good. Um, and it has multiple links, and each link has different tools. So you've got, um, oh, can you go back to the, the links image so I can just kind of point at some of them? This one? Yeah. So um, you've got, each link has, you know, a Phillips screwdriver or a, a hex wrench. Um, you've also got a scrub, a bottle opener, a um, socket, um, different, you know, can opener or whatever, all sorts of different pieces, scribes. And it's just like a fun little multi-tool. And they're, they're really cool looking. It's really beautiful. And they're very, very well made. They're made, um, I think, in Portland, Oregon, where they've always been made. And they have their own machine shops. These are indi you know, they're, they're machined. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think they're cast. I think they're each individually machined. Um, but I guess they're stainless steel. Yeah. Actually, I have no idea. Um, look on the Leatherman page. I'm sure they have a video or, or some information about how each link is made. Um, but they're, they're really gorgeous. And they come in stainless steel and also this, uh, this black. Uh, oxide 
coated stain, um, steel as well. And what's neat is uh, for all the people who are like, but can I take it on a plane? You can. They, uh, the, the Leatherman Tread, um, they even have a full page about how there's these, um, it's, not certifica it's not certification, but there's requirements for something to be able to be taken on to a flight. And yeah. they, they, they made sure that you know all of their the, the links on the tread match it, so you don't yeah. have to worry about traveling with this. You can wear it all the time. You can take it with you. Yeah. So I had I was wearing one every day for two months because I was doing a lot of work that just required tools constantly. Yeah, you were and choosing the networking and, and stuff. And it just worked out really well. Mm -hmm. so. And you can change the links. So you, the links are all removable. You use a screwdriver and you remove them. So you you keep the links you want to make it the size that fits you. So if you have a large yeah. wrist, you can keep all the links. And if you have a smaller uh, wrist, you take one. I kind of used it like a portable tool belt. On yeah. The wrist. So, anyways. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool too. Okay. Anyways, we really like them. Check them out. Yep. Here we go. From Pimeroni. This the is hat. the Fat Dack. So these are like little Pico hats. I don't know what the P. I guess maybe the P stands for Pimeroni. Um, then these are little uh, add-ons for the Raspberry Pi Zero in particular, but they also work great with any other Raspberry Pi that has the two by twenty connector. This is the DAC. So it is a stereo I two S output that gives you line out, um, a high quality line out. Uh, you can use this on the Pi Zero, which doesn't have any audio connections, or you can use it on a normal Pi, and even if it does have audio connections, because you'll get a good quality digital output, you'll get a, a very nice digital um, stereo output. It's uh, support for it is built into the kernel. You just have to edit one config file, and basically just works like a charm. Okay, and then uh, second to last, not least, is this is the scroll hat. Yeah. So this is a five by 11 LED um, scrolling display. You can control it over I squared C. So, so it's, wait, go back, that's a, that's a different one. Oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, it has white LEDs and you can scroll small messages or graphs or displays and, and light ele every LED on or off. And you can again use it with any Raspberry Pi. I believe it uses only I squared C, so it's compatible with all of them. Yeah, okay. And then this time I really meant it. Okay, so this is the Explorer hat. Yeah. Hi, Maroni, so, coming in. Yeah, this has got a lot going on here. This is the Explorer fat, and this adds uh, two DC motors, uh, f f four five-volt safe inputs, five-volt output, and then you also get four analog inputs as well. So it's a kind of a, a big collection of um, sensors you can see on the back. Oh, those are Darlington outputs. So great for like little robotics projects or... Um, uh, you know, like sensing stuff. If you want to make a big little project, it kind of adds a lot of capability and mm -hmm. um, it's very nice and small. Again, works with any of the Raspberry Pis. Okay. And then um, last but not least. Okay, now we're on to our Yeah, stuff. this is the star of the show besides you tonight. This is the Feather M0 Wi-Fi. This is our, the latest in our Feather line. This one features a Cortex M0, the at SMD21 G18 with um, Wi-Fi built in. This, it's actually this is the um, shows the headers on it. I'm going to show both at once, but it has um, the Atwink 1500 Wi-Fi module on it. It's a really nice Wi-Fi module from Atmel. Um, I really liked it. Oh, can, can you just uh, stick stay on this one? Okay, stay on that one. Um, it's a really nice Wi-Fi module. It has um, really good low power modes. Like it uses. Um, uh, about 20 milliamps on average without, sorry, uh, 12 milliamps on average for the Wi-Fi module um, when you put into the auto power down mode. And, and you can go into an even deeper sleep mode, but that's like with it actually running and you can receive and send data. Um, so 12 milliamps is really, really good for, for active connection. Um, and it has SSL support, has the certificates built in, the SSL certificates are, are burned into the firmware. Um, it uses SPI, so it's it's, it, it has a, a full library from the Atmel software framework that makes it very easy to use, you know, with SL connections. We just added MDNS support. It can act like as a soft AP, so it can act like its own access point. You can do server, client, UDP, TCP, kind of everything that you would want to do. Um, it's uh, very fast. It's very reliable. Um, we really prefer this over the CC3000, especially for the SSL support and soft AP and, and very fast connection times. So it's also nice and slim, so we thought we would toss it onto a feather with the AtSMD21, uh, which is a really nice Cortex M0 processor, which has a lot of capabilities. So this is kind of like, you know, we have the Huzzah Feather, which has the ESP8266, 
And it's a really, really good feather. We absolutely like it. It's going to be the lowest cost way to, to get Wi-Fi going. But if you are like, okay, well, I really want analog digital converters, this has like 10. If you want a digital output, this has a DAC on it. You want timers and PWMs and, and low power capabilities. You don't want to have to yield to the Wi-Fi core. You want to be able to do very timing specific stuff. Uh, you want to have um, steady Wi-Fi throughput. This board is a more advanced, more, I want to say powerful, but it has more capabilities and, and more flexibility um, with it. So it's a trade-off, both are very good, but I think this one definitely has a place where there's some projects we're working on that you can't do with an ESP8266, but you can do with a Cortex-M0 because you have control over the processor and you have um, DMA, for example, which you know you, you may want to use, or um, I2S and I2C and SPI and serial and all those circoms we talked about. Yeah. So. Um, it's kind of nice, comes with a built-in live poly battery charger, the reset button has a native USB support, which is also kind of neat if you want to do you know, native USB. You can also do a USB host, apparently, I haven't used it, but apparently you can do it. Um, and of course it works with all our feather wings, so it's kind of a nice little, yeah. nice little board. You built a platform. It's a platform, and okay. I think this is a, a nice addition and, to it. And then there's a couple... Uh, Additional photos. So this is an in action. This is in action. I, I put the you know an OLED module. You can also plug into a breadboard and and power it up and use it. it has two uh, LEDs on the end that tell you when it's connected to Wi-Fi and when there's data transfer. Yeah. So it's kind of nice. What's the range on um, something like this? Like how far can it go? Ooh, you know, uh, it's like at least 100 meters, but it okay. it depends on uh, of course the access point. But it's it's kind of like any small Wi-Fi dongle. I mean whatever. Yeah. Whatever you get from that, um, it's you know not going to be super high power. I'm working on getting a version of this with a UFL connector, so you can add an antenna and then you can go much further. Okay. All right. Um, so that's new products for the week. Congrats. Yay.